How do I configure Spanning Tree Protocol? Spanning Tree is awesome because it's truly all about the concepts. You could spend hours learning about what is the root bridge, how is it elected, how do the other switches find the best way to the root bridge and block the redundant paths, what if the root bridge fails, how does it fail over, how much time does that take, blah, 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 blah. And down and down the concept trail we can go. But when it comes to the configuration, there is one command. Now, there is more, but there is one that really does it all, and that's this one right here, electing the root bridge. So when you're thinking about spanning tree, studying for spanning tree, implementing spanning tree, that's the one command you want to use. Honestly, in my career, I've used the rest of these commands a handful of times, and they were always for weird situations where we're like, well, I guess we can make it work if we did this. Maybe, you know, it's like a Band-Aid approach sort of thing. So these, I would say, yeah, you know, know they exist, but really, this is the one command you want to know. Okay, so what is it? Electing the root bridge. I'm going to go into whoa, the configuration mode of uh, Switch, and first off, I just said there's one command. I'm going to show you some commands. I want to know who the current root bridge is, so I'm going to do uh, show spanning tree, hit the enter key. Now, you remember that Cisco switches run per VLAN spanning tree, so you have the ability to set a uh, spanning tree on every single VLAN differently, but in this case, the switch only has one uh, VLAN, and I can see spanning tree is enabled. It's using the normal 802.1D, which is the original spanning tree protocol. It says the person who is the root, the switch, I, I kind of talked to switch which is like their people. Uh, the switch who is the root has this priority and this MAC address, and I get to them when I say I, I'm talking CBT switch one. CBT switch one gets to it by going out port 11, or essentially fast ethernet zero slash 11, which has a cost of 19. So this is kind of the uh, baseball trading card on who is the root bridge, here's its stats. And then the switch says, oh, and then there's me, I am a priority of 32,769. My MAC address is this. I'm saying hello every two seconds. You know, blah, 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 down we go. So we can see who the current root bridge is. I'm going to go into global configuration mode. Here is the one command. I'm going to type in spanning tree followed by the VLAN because we have per VLAN spanning tree. I only have one VLAN in this case, but if you had a whole bunch, you would do one through 100 or however many VLANs you had. Then you get to say root, and then you have an option, primary or secondary. Now this is method one to elect the root bridge, like you can see here in the background. Method one says I can go in there and I can say uh, this switch is the primary, and what that does is it looks at the priority of the current root bridge and it puts itself two steps below the primary, the, the current root bridge. So if the the current root bridge is uh, 20 or 32,768 is the priority. That's the default for just about everyone. It says, okay, I'm going to put myself two below that one. Now, with the spanning tree, it uses increments of 4,096. has to do with per VLAN spanning tree. They had to steal bits to make that all happen. But for now, just remember, the increments are in 4,096. So using a quick calculator, you would say, okay, it's you know 28,000 or 24,000. It's going to do something. Essentially, it's going to put itself two below because you can see the second command we have here is spanning tree vlan one root secondary so if you want to have a backup root bridge like what happens if the main root bridge goes down this guy's going to take over well he is going to set himself as one increment below the primary right so these are kind of uh, squishy meaning i don't know what the priority is going to be i just know it's going to set itself if it can to below whatever the current root bridge is now if you're not so squishy, you can go back and say, I want to use VLAN 1, and instead of typing in root, you can type in priority, and then here you go. Bridge priority increments of 4,096. So I can just say, you know what? This guy's zero. Hello. That'll be the uh, lowest possible priority you can have, which means it is the best possible election candidate for the root bridge. Uh, that's one way to do it. I don't like that because it doesn't allow you to squeeze anything else uh, below it if you have a uh, another switch you want to be the root bridge on an emergency basis or something like that. So for now, I'm just going to do root primary. Right? This is the one command. I hit enter. Oh, it's done. I go back to uh, privilege mode. Show spanning tree, BPDUs, the hello messages are happening once every two seconds, so it should go quite quickly, and it did. This switch has now become the root. Check out the priority. Two below, right? There's that 24,577. Two below the, uh, the current one. Uh, increments, I should say, below. So it is now the root bridge. So the bridge ID, you can see this is the same person. The root and the current bridge is the same one. Okay. Everything else, what are these things? These are things that tweak spanning tree. I'm actually going to start from the bottom up just because I'm here right now looking at the hello time being every two seconds. I can come in here and say, you know what? I want the uh, spanning tree for VLAN 1 to have a hello time. And the lowest you can go is one second. 
So you can see this is most of the time you don't use this command. However, if you really think about it, if you make it part of your standard switch template config, because they all want need to have the same hello time, uh, you can actually cut the time it takes spanning tree to converge in half because it's going to be able to detect a failure faster because it's saying hello, 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 hello once a second uh, rather than once every two seconds. That being said, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, real world, you just don't see people do that. You say, okay, I'm just going to keep the standard two-second hello time. Um, I, I, I don't mean to, to sound uh, negative or anything like that, but I have never seen anybody tweak the default hello time uh, in the spanning tree world. Now, what about the cost and priority? First off, what's the difference? The cost is how does the switch find the best way to the root bridge? As a matter of fact, I just minimized it, but take a look right here. You can see that this switch said, you know what? I'm going to go out uh, fast Ethernet uh, 0 slash 11. Matter of fact, right here. 0 slash 11, back before it became the root bridge, is why I scrolled up. It says, this is my root port. It cost me 19 in order to get to that root bridge. That's because uh, Spanning Tree Protocol 802.1D said that 100 megabit per second link would be a cost of 19. So it says, okay, cost of 19, cost of 19, and it adds those things up. But if I want to go, now, if this is actually not a good Spanning Tree example topology. I need that extra line there, cost of 19. So when this guy's like, okay, if this guy's the root, that's the most cost-effective way to get there because it cost me 19, but the cost is transmitted in the BPDU, so it's also able to say, okay, I could get to the root if I go this way, but it's going to cost me 38. No way. This is the more efficient way. But maybe, this is why I'm saying, I've never really seen this done too often, but if you have one of those weird situations where you want to tweak and you're like, well, let's, let's try this, you can actually go into the port and say, you know what? This is really a cost of one. And this is a cost of one. So even though this is a 100 megabit per second link and this is a 100 megabit per second link, it's going to say, you know what? A cost of two is pretty darn good. I'm going to go that way and block this link as the uh, non-preferred way to get to the port. So that's what the cost is. What about the priority? Priority is handy if you have two switches that are connected like that, right? Cost is the same. Cisco's like, you know what? Maybe you just, you know, you want to prefer this link. Let me circle it. This link right here over this link. <laughs> this link. Uh, so I want this one. Well, in spanning tree, lower port values are better than higher port values. So maybe this is port one. This is port two. It's going to prefer this one by default unless you tweak with the port priority. The port priority says, you know what? I don't want to play these games. Like, let's let's just lie to the switch. Let's be honest. That's what we're doing here, right? Uh, we're, let's just lie to the switch and tell it, it it costs less than it really does. Let's keep the cost the same, but let's change the priority to say, you know what? I prefer this one. So I can go in and adjust the priority to a, uh, a better value than I would on this one. So how do we do that? I'm back on my switch. I'm going to go into interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 11, and here's the command. I can type in spanning tree, and right there you can see the uh, cost is one value I can type in and say the cost is, you know, you can figure it out using your default formula, or I'm just going to say the cost is one, and that automatically overrules it. Or I can go in spanning tree, and you see the command right below it, right? Uh, port priority, and I can say the port priority is actually uh, 16. You know, and, and set it at a uh, lower port priority. Now, again, with the uh, uh, wording, sometimes it's confusing. Just remember in spanning tree, lower is always better. In terms of root bridge election, the BPDU, uh, in, in terms of the bridge priority, the lower is better. The cost, lower is better. The priority, lower is better. So that's good. Everything's consistent all the way through. Anytime you're thinking of the value, lower is better. In summary, if you are managing spanning tree in the real world, all you need to know is the one command. Use the reference books for the others. If you're managing spanning tree in a certification exam environment, you got to know them all. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.